Tati, Bogey, <laughs> Crony from 8 nothing down. Uh, reminds you of the Daniel Camarena game. It doesn't remind you of 2023, I promise you that. From out of nowhere, down 8 nothing in the sixth inning at Petco in front of this huge crowd, the Padres absolutely stunned the Cubs. Dare I say an early season turning point, Jim, to get to 6-7 and seven for San Diego. Do we have a turning point? On April 8th, get in here. You have to subscribe. We're trying to get to 6,000 subscribers. Tonight is a reason to subscribe. We want – how many likes do you want tonight, Jim? Oh, dude. You want to come back? Uh, all the likes. I would love 1,000 likes, but – 1,000 likes? That's that, Let's say that's, 500. Let's say 300. 100. 300 likes, minimum. <laughs> minimum. Likes. Five likes. All right. Let's get, let's get 200 likes minimum. Yeah. Follow us at John Schaefer at Jim Russell SD. We'll get to every super tonight. If you want to support the channel, if you want to commemorate an eight nothing rally for the Padres at Petco to win nine eight, just unbelievable. Uh, click the dollar sign below the chat box. And if you want to become a member, you get emojis, you get badges, you get more. Click the join button down below. I mean, stunning, remarkable, especially off yesterday uh, to fall behind eight nothing, lifeless through five innings, just two hits into the sixth inning. Darvish wasn't good. The bullpen didn't start well. Uh, it ended very well. Um, baseball will do that to you, man. Over 162, you just never know when you're going to walk into a game like this, and it feels significant even though it's only April 8th. This is their best win since Game 4 of the NLDS in 2022. Disagree. Since Game 2 of the NLCS. Or sorry, sorry, Game 4. Well, Game 2 of the NLCS, yes, but they ended up losing that series. And I think when you when you trail against well, we the don't Dodgers in this series... <laughs> Just, just let me just, just game four NLDS best win disagree. since game four of NLDS. Game two of the think, NLCS. I don't think many people would disagree with me, except for you. I think a lot of people would disagree with you. I'm going to actually put a poll up. Game two of the NLCS was a bigger game, and they came back from four or five down in that game series. And they beat the Dodgers in game four of the NLDS. Yeah. Okay. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, this is a win that. Last year's team couldn't even dream of having. They just couldn't. And, I mean, I'll admit it. I thought this one was over, like way over. Well, everyone uh, did. A lot of people did. And to this team's credit, getting that sixth inning especially, because that's when it all flipped and turned around. It started with Jake Cronenworth. And then he went to Hassan Kim, and then you get Campusano, and then you have a big Bogarts moment, and you make it 8 7. And at that point in time, you kind of just feel they're winning this game. They, like they have to win this game. Not only does it feel like they're going to win the game, they have to win this game because if they end up losing 8 7, that comeback means nothing. It's not a moral victory comeback. Because guess what? They still would have lost. So you, you're thinking to yourself, like, they have to win this game. They they cannot, after what they did in that sixth inning, to pull it to within a run, lose this game. And they didn't. And that's a credit to this team. That's a credit to the guys not giving up at, at bats. Um, Because they easily could have given up at bats. Like, this was a tailor-made game for just, loop slop. Game over. Like, I just, let's go home. And they didn't. And that's credit to the team. Now, dude, I saw, I, I saw people in the fifth inning talking about Preller's job. And you know who oh, you yeah. are. I mean, oh, yeah. I saw people in the fifth inning talking about Preller's job. And Preller's job was never in the line tonight if they lose eight, nothing. I mean, if they're five and eight or six and seven, the path doesn't change. I mean, you need to get into the postseason. But, all I know is this. They've had fight. This is not the only example of it. I think they've had either nine or ten innings of four-plus runs. That's crazy. They didn't have a four-plus run inning until game 28 last year. I think they've had four or five four-run innings, four or five five-run innings, and now a seven-run inning. Now, they were quiet for the last six or seven days. One multiple-run inning in their last 57 coming in, but it was a four-run inning from Profar in the Grand Slam. There is no resemblance. I'm not saying in wins and losses, but there's no resemblance in their fight and in their capabilities on offense to 2023. I, I don't know what it means. I don't know if they're going to win 89 games or 99 games or 79 games. I just know there's no resemblance 
on offense to what we saw a year ago. I don't think they're perfect team. I don't think it's a perfect offense. I was a little concerned by Darvish's start, obviously, here tonight. But you win in that manner, and then you have Musgrove and Cease to finish off the series, and it becomes obviously a must-win series after winning a game like that. But it just feels like, yeah, it's one game, and what's the difference between five and eight and six and seven? But we'll find out. I mean, it, you know, sometimes things like that have a funny way of of being of value. Um, I'm not gonna say it's a turning point, but it absolutely. How could that not be of value? What the Padres did here tonight. What these types of of wins and games do for a team is when they're down four nothing, right? When they're down five to one, it gives them the confidence and it it gives them a a reference point to go back to mm-hmm. that we can do it. Like, oh, remember that game we came back eight nothing versus the Cubs and won? Like, we got that in us. We can do it. You know, when you had so many games last year when they would trail by three runs and it was over, they had no reference point. They had nothing they could go back on to and to remember in the season where they could say as a team collectively in that dugout, we've done this before. Mm-hmm. We've done this before. Now you have at least that, you at least have one game under your belt. Hopefully you get multiple and hopefully this turns into not a trend where you're always having these comeback wins, but you know, if they're trailing by two runs or even three runs, which is not the end of the world, you know, they don't feel like defeated. They don't feel like it's just over. They don't feel like they have this giant uphill climb that last year's team felt like they had every time they went down three nothing. These are what these types of wins do. I don't think it's a turning point in your season being this early on, but it is a all right, take this game down eight nothing. We won nine eight. Put that in our back pocket. So whenever we're in a moment the rest of this season, and it could be tomorrow, right, where we are trailing in a game by a significant amount of runs, we are not hopeless. We are, oh, remember when we did that? And who knows? Maybe it, maybe they pull a couple more of these, you know, comeback wins out of their ass. But that's how I view tonight. I don't view it as a turning point. I view it as a... Um, confidence booster and something they can put in their back pocket for inevitably when they're trailing by multiple runs, four or five runs later in the year at some point. I want to know how many times last year, I don't have it in front of me, it would be in the game notes. How many times a year ago did they win when trailing in the sixth inning or later? It, I'm talking by one run or more. Kevin, put in the game notes, buddy. Put in the tidbits. They've done it twice this year. It's April 8th. Twice this year, they've come from overcome a deficit in the sixth inning or later. Tonight, 8 nothing, Opening, home opener against the Giants. They trailed by a run, I think, in the seventh inning and won that game. I mean, that's not who they were a year ago. They had like five of those. I'm telling you they had like five of those wins a year ago. They have two of them on April 8th. Ben, let's get started here with the um, with the Super Chats. Guys, if you're here, you got to subscribe. We're trying to get to 6,000 subscribers. Tonight's a big reason to subscribe and like this video as well. We appreciate your Supers. We get to all of them. Padres in a stunning comeback. Win 9-8 over the Cubs at Petco. Well, thank you, Ben. He says, commercials currently in development. Are you a Padres fan who developed a heart condition while watching games? You may be entitled to compensation. Um, you'll take a heart condition off a win like this, won't you? I mean, like you said, if you lose this game 8-7, you're like, are you kidding me? Right. All that for naught. But yeah. that's not what happened, thanks to Fernando Tatis Jr. That was a moment, man. That was a moment. Oh, two outs? Two outs, runner on, and you hit the, the go-ahead home run that it just felt like you you never got last year. And maybe they did, but like it, nah, it took I forever. Did. I don't know if they did. Like that go-ahead two, not only that go-ahead two-run home run, but a go-ahead two, two uh, go-ahead to run home run by your star players. We talked a lot about it today on John and Jim last night on the wrap up show. This team is going to go as far as they are going to go based on how their star players perform tonight. You had a big home run from bogey and you had a big home run from toddy. You don't always have to have all three of your big stars do something, but if you get two or three, you know, do do like big time things like tonight. That's that's what's going to help them win a lot of games. And you got that tonight from from Bogarts and Toddy. Um, yeah, not necessarily Manny, but that, that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> we for, can't have all nice things. Exactly. Like I'll take two or three of the superstars having big time moments rather than all three. But you get my point. And I didn't hear Schulte's post game press conference today. 
because we started the wrap up show, but like, I really hope if, if anybody in the chat listened to, to Schulte's post game press conference, please tell me that it was an all timer. Please tell me that it was an all time. He better use name Toddy, games. Bogey, Kimmy, Crony, Campy, Battling, uh, Never Give Up. I, I need all the details from uh, the Schulte post game press conference. All right, Vector53, thank you for the super. He says, 24 Padres, the Jekyll Hyde team. Great comeback. I, I don't think they've been Jekyll Hyde at all. I think this is actually more of who they've been. I think their losses have been completely excruciating in 1-in-1,000 one 1, plays. The Cronenworth glove play and the Kim ball that pops out of his mate yesterday. Like That, to me, doesn't summarize the team. That's like just absurd bad luck. And we can talk about last year they were unlucky. The Cronenworth glove play and the <laughs> Kim... But that is flat out bad luck. Right. They should have another win. I mean, those are one in 1,000 results. One of those games they should have won. It's just flat out true. Mm -hmm. So I don't think they've really been Jekyll Hyde. I actually think they've been, like I've said before, I'm cautiously optimistic. I think they've been slightly encouraging, if not encouraging. Yeah, they're six and seven, but look at the way that in which they're playing. And they've been in games. Um, they've had some excruciating losses, yet they overcame. I mean, this Cubs loss, if you're the Cubs tonight, I mean, this is a Oof. horrific loss, and it's a credit Oof. to the Padres. Yeah. But, um, no, I don't think they've really been Jekyll Hyde to this point. They're 6-7. and seven. That's not really that Jekyll Hyde-y to me. They just haven't been consistent on offense. You're, you're, you're not seeing, like, one game where they scored 10 runs, the next game they score one run. That's more like a Jekyll and Hyde to me. I think this team so far just started out pretty decent on offense and they went in kind of a rut over the last week and while they got good pitching and it was very frustrating and a couple of losses this year have been completely like hey we just found a new way to lose that's awesome types of losses yeah definitely um and tonight they pulled the rabbit out of their hat and it was a oh my god we found a way to win game when we were completely left for dead Mm -hmm. You need these types of wins in a season to like, if you're going to be a playoff team, you know, it's just, you have to have these, holy shit. We just won that game. Like at least multiple times in a season. Oh, of course. To be a playoff team. Cause it's not going to be just as easy as like, Oh, we go up for nothing. And we win those games all the time. Like you're going to have to win some games when you're trailing for nothing. You're going to have to win a game or two when you're trailing seven. Like, you know, it's going to have to be like that in a season. Um, for you to have a special type of year can't always just be black and white no and you're gonna have to win a game that you give up a lead in you're gonna have to win a game that you blow a four nothing lead in and you're down six four yep. and then you get a three run home run from machado and you win seven six i mean yeah yeah like the, there's a you know it's a long season it's a good division and it's a good night is what right. i would say i mean it doesn't change the fact that it's a long year it doesn't change all the deficiencies but it does prove that they're capable of doing some special things i mean tonight was from completely out of nowhere and you know it's a one in a thousand type turnaround i mean what was it 99.2 percent win probability for the cubs i can't believe it was that low in the sixth inning it's more like a 99.9 .9 at petco um carson thank you for the superman appreciate it uh he Thanks, says carson. how were you guys feeling during tatis's at bad i thought once they made eight seven they were going to get even or ahead in the game i really did believe that and i thought in the seventh inning they were going to they had two on one out Hit some balls hard. I thought then the walk to Merrill was could have been costly in the eighth inning, and they made them pay to their credit. But I felt confident after they scored the seven runs, they were just going to find a way, and it was going to be one of those just bizarre, weird nights. Yeah, as, as soon as they made it 8-7, the following inning, yep. they, the Cubs were – I mean, the Cubs got knocked in the mouth, and they were wobbling, and they didn't know what the hell oh, was yeah. going on. Mm -hmm. At that point, that's why I said, like, you got to win this game. You yep. cannot have the Cubs win this game. You just can't. No questions asked. And yep. they did. And you got the biggest moment of the season so far with, with you know, Tatis's home run. Um, it just overall was just a, a fantastic win. It's the best win of the year easily so far up to this point. It's, to me, the best win in over a year. Um, and uh, it just gives this team confidence going forward when they're trailing in games that they can come back and they can win. And these types of win wins, you know, you can do all the like going out to dinners and um, special activities as a team. Nothing brings a team closer together than wins like tonight. You can have all the like outings in the world. You can have the, all the barbecues and all the fire pit outings and the pizza gatherings with the team, but nothing brings a team closer together than wins in games like tonight.
Nothing. Right. And of course, you got to be careful because, I mean, Daniel Camarena, you know, there was that game and that did, I mean, at the in the moment, it was like the greatest thing that happened in, in recent franchise history and that team completely collapsed. I mean, it, it's a moment in time. It's a game, right? Just like we said, it's not necessarily a turning point. It's one of 162. It's like, what do you make of it? I mean, that was probably more improbable than tonight, considering yeah. who was on the mound right. opposite you, you know? That team was just like... I think that team was already going through problems and no no it was may that's when they were on a red heart really red hot tear i think our team was like 15 or 15 games over 500 at one point i think that was part of it what the hell happened with that team? yeah well they had no <laughs> pitching uh cruiser and thank you <laughs> yeah uh he says hope this uh gives manny fomo and gets him going i mean manny had some really interesting quotes if you read dennis lynn in the athletic about him not being 100 percent, he doesn't expect to be potentially until 2025 plus it's a completely tbd timetable on him getting back into the field i mean it's it's definitely concerning his start he has had starts like this before they've kind of overcome it to this point to be like a 500 baseball team through 13 games but of course they have to get him going there's no substitute for manny machado even a night like tonight yeah if if he's not hitting like he is then that's that puts more pressure on guys like Tatis and Bogarts mm -hmm. and Cronenworth, you know, to produce because it, it, it kind of is like, Hey, I need you guys to pick me up here. And tonight they did Cronenworth, Toddy and Bogey. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Crony, Toddy, and hmm. Bogey. They all picked up Machado tonight. Machado had a, a bad game over four again, two strikeouts. And when he's not hitting, you need everyone else around him to produce and that's what happened tonight and that was great to see um because this team has relied a lot on on manny machado it, the, when he goes the team usually goes and when he's not going it's been tough they need those guys to step up and they did that tonight and it was it was great to see even though you know it felt like it was completely over in that fifth inning <laughs> so, yeah even sixth inning the I mean, sixth yeah. inning sorry Eight nothing the six. Well, the fourth uh, the inning, I guess, right? They would lost. Yeah, game. when they went down eight nothing. But then yeah. you get later in the game, like you don't respond to the bottom of the fourth, you don't respond to the bottom of the fifth. You had just yeah. two hits. I mean, right. you, you just can't predict something like that, especially coming off yesterday and coming off the giant series where they were. I mean, they hadn't been doing on anything on offense for five or six days, and then just out of nowhere, a seven run inning. Right. Uh, the beef, thank you for your membership in the super guys. If you're here, please subscribe. Uh, we're trying to get to 6,000 subscribers this month. We need you. And please smash that like button for us as well. We're trying to get to 200 likes tonight. Hold on. Thanks for the supers. Did I say 200? You did. Because we have over 500 people in our chat right now. So that's now been bumped up to, oh, I don't know, 500. Everybody in the chat right now, <laughs> every person watching, I see over 500 plus people here. Just hit that like button. That's all I want right now. Hit that like button. If you are watching us, I see you. We're almost at... 550 people watching hit that like button hit that subscribe button let's get it to this get us close to 6,000 tonight and i mean padres had the biggest win it feels like in forever um hit that like button that's greatly appreciated all right the beef thank you says wow 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 what a game post game presser was great to hear even down they were positive and locked in yeah i saw schulte said that They're like it brought them closer together being down eight nothing they never lost like resolve Mm -hmm. um, they didn't give up at bats and proofs in the pudding because of what they did. Um, he says he regrets a lot of tweets during the game. F, what a win. This may be a season-changing game. Turning point. Even beyond it, season-changing here on mm -hmm. April 8th, says the beef. We'll see what they do with it. We'll see what they do mm -hmm. on the other side of this. Two games against the Cubs, then they're off for Dodger Stadium. You just you never know what a win is worth. We'll, we'll find out moving forward. I don't give anybody crap for tweeting out like game's over and this and that after the after they go eight, down eight nothing because what again what do you have to go off of that this Padres team was going to come back and win this game you don't right I mean if you tweet out like Chris Paul hits a three to pull you within 42 <laughs> that's right, right. <laughs> I mean that was a Jake Cronenworth home run I was like I know. oh you know that's nice and and I I guarantee you 98 percent of Padres fans felt the same way like oh cool great Jake Cronenworth got a home run well wow, that's awesome not a, a Padres blogger He's he wrote everybody except for Mark Bartlett. Win. I know everybody except for Mark. Everybody but Mark yeah. thought this team was going to lose. Good for Mark. Mark is the most, optim most optimistic Padre fan I have ever met in my life. So yeah. I wouldn't expect anything less than from Mark. 
Uh, even if this team was trailing 15 nothing for him. <laughs> he even had the score. I mean, to I win, know. who who knew it would have been 9-8 if they I know. won the game? I know. I know. Incredible. Great tweet. All right, let's get to uh, more supers that are rolling in. Evan, thank you, man, for the uh, super chat. He says, Fernando Tatis Jr. is a San Diego Padre. I mean, we said all offseason. I'm not saying it had to be an Acuna bounce back year like last year, but it's got to be a big year. Had to be better than he was a year ago. And he was good. But he wasn't great, and he's capable of greatness. Just look at his 2021. Just look at his time when healthy outside of last year, essentially. I mean, this guy's going to have to hit 40 home runs, and he's going to have to be top three in MVP voting for this team to have a special year. He's just going to have to be. We've seen him be that player. He's good. He's capable of hitting 40-plus home runs. He's hit four already, um, and not just hitting 40 home runs, hitting meaningful home runs like the one in which he hit here tonight. Yeah, I mean, if Tatis has – and there's a difference between like Manny had 30 home runs last year. How many were like extremely impactful home runs? Well, I don't think any of the home runs that they hit last year as a team were extremely impactful. But you get my point. If you have, if Tatis ends up the year with 35 home runs, four of them so far have been very impactful. If I'm not mistaken, all four I, of his home runs. I remember all of them. He had a two, two home run game that they lost. Okay. And then tonight. I don't know what the other one was. My point is, um, it's better to have 35 home runs with like, 10, you know, 15 of them being like super impactful, 15 to 20, than having mm -hmm. 30 and they're all like garbage time home runs. Like a Jake Cronworth yeah. home run tonight, if they ended up losing eight to right. two, it would be like that has no value. No value. But when you win, but when you win, it becomes a, a important home run. Like yeah. tonight, Tatis has four home runs. You know, if he homers when they're down 10 1, it really doesn't. Yep. Get, okay, great. But when you homer to give the team the lead after trying to eight nothing, that home run becomes even bigger. And again, with someone like Bogey, who had one extra base hit on the yeah. season to hit a home run in that spot, yeah, that's also extremely meaningful because, again, he had done nothing. So to do it in a big spot, like with power, was something you just can't expect. He hadn't done it all year and he came through in a big spot. Um, Richard, thank you. He says I made a statement yesterday about your blue collar players. I got killed in the chat. Your blue collar players set the table for the comeback. Uh, yeah, maybe. I mean, Corona worth if he's blue collar. I think some of the stars showed up though, like Crony and Toddy. What are <laughs> Santos? I, I remember kind of briefly your super Richard in your your comment yesterday. What did we? What, what did we say about no, that? No, not us. He's in the chat. Oh, okay. Because I, I was like killed in the chat. I remember. I was like, did we? What did we say about those guys? That chat, who knows? Um, listen, <laughs> it's a fair point. I mean, again, Merrill's been so huge. Oh, my goodness. Including tonight with Incredible. that walk in front of Tatis. It was massive. Yeah. Um, Alejandro, thank you. Says Tatis, a dog. Love the cleats tonight, too. Hashtag Tony went super cool. Awesome cool. homage, throwback. I mean, he's had he's going to have 50 different personalized pairs of cleats this year. He's up to like his sixth or seventh. To this point, he's going to have at least 50 personalized cleats this year, which is crazy, I think. Hold on. I'm pulling these up right And now. cool. I mean, these cleats are like – he, is he a Nike guy now? He is. He's a Nike guy right now. Right? Yep. At one point tonight, I was like, this is the best part of the Padres is these cleats. Right. Um. So you see these right here that I pulled up? Here we go. Ooh. Dude. Dope. These freaking cleats, man. Mm hmm. Look at this thing. Two different eras, two different cleats. I mean, those of all the cleats he's worn this year, I think these right now are my favorite ones. There have been some wild ones already. He's at Tiffany and Company. He's had the military. He's had these uh, stuff with our Curry. buddy Mark Bartlett, by the way. You see that? Mark Bartlett so name's on the Bartlett. Mark Bartlett, our, our Padres. Yeah, I know. Rookie. Yeah. So the, his name's on the on the cleats. Yeah. You see, I knew Mark when he came in. He said he's working with Tatis on a lot of stuff. Yeah, because Mark used to be in the military. That's dope. Yeah, that's incredible. And then, of course, you know, just a little bias here. The Steph Curry cleats were pretty freaking awesome as well. But you know, they were. Cool. I, digr I digress. Anyway, um, yeah, man, power of the cleats. Those were awesome. Really cool. I mean, he's got so much swag, obviously. Um, 
Ben, th- I mean, there's nobody like him. There really isn't. I mean, it's unbelievable. His star power is massive. Now, again, the, the suspension and the missed time kind of changed things a little bit. But for Padres fans that know who he is, I mean, this guy is a one-of-one, one, unbelievably special player is what he is. Um, ben, thank you. He says, uh, yeah, exactly. But they were only two for seven with runners in scoring position. I'm saying this aloud to myself because sometimes I, too, get caught up over analyzing stats. That's the thing. You have to be careful with some of that stuff. Sometimes a win is a win, whether it's one nothing or you come back from eight runs down. It's not a beauty pageant. It's not sometimes the manner in which you win matters, but like just win the game to overcome. Yeah, okay. So they trailed eight nothing. So the pitching stats won't look good tonight. Or who cares what the stats look like tonight? They won the game. Mm-hmm. That's all that matters. Just like all that matters yesterday is who cares what happened? They lost the game. They right. should have won it, but they lost it. So sometimes we we reach in those manners, but all that matters tonight is somehow overcoming that deficit to win. And that's the biggest thing. Um, getting the win, you had to make sure that comeback was completed. Mm-hmm. And that's what they did. And that's what, you know, good teams do. They complete comebacks. They don't fall short here. And they, they complete those comebacks. How many times have the Dodgers completed comebacks? Like a lot. It feels like <laughs> they, they had to win this game. They won this game, and I would argue, like I'm with you, John. We both are this, feel the same way. There's, it's hard to find anybody else in baseball who's more exciting when they are doing things like this than Fernando Tatis Jr. I've said before, he's up there with my favorite player ever, and I don't say that. I, like just to say that I'm I, because that's who he represents to me. You can't take your eyes off him. Mm-hmm. You always think he's capable of what he did tonight. Just Where everything he, runs, he does, throws, fields, hits, and hits for power, and the cleats, and the look, and the swag, and the star power. I mean, he's one of my favorite players, and he's only what twenty four. He has a chance to be a one of the best players I've ever seen. And B, maybe the most favorite player I've ever watched. I mean, he's just that special to me. He like you cannot take Fernando Tatis Jr. for granted. Like to yeah. to the original super chat point, like he's a San Diego Padre. Dude is flat out special. And I'm sure he is. I'm sure everybody in Atlanta says the same thing about Ronald Acuna Jr. Yep. And I would not disagree with them because Ronald Acuna Jr., I mean, what he did last year, those numbers were freaking incredible, and he deserved the MVP 100 percent I just think if he played a different sport like football or basketball, he'd be a massive national, international star. Now, again, the, the suspension hurt has changed the story a little bit nationally, unfortunately, and that's on him. That sucks. But I mean, let's be again, if he played like in the NFL and was a quarterback, he'd be one of the biggest like sports figures in the in America, right? If he's doing stuff like this as a quarterback, you know, doing yeah, well, the that's flash, what, that's and what I'm flare saying, and... flash, exactly. But he has to produce. You know, all, it can't just be all substance. He, I mean, all flash and no substance. He has to. He's got three to top three MVP voting votes, doesn't he? Or top five already in his career? Yeah. And 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 after last year, it was like, okay, you got to pass all the reasons we've talked about here. Now you have to go out and be that guy again. You got to be that top five MVP candidate. You got to be that guy that gets you forty home runs. You got to be that guy that brings the energy. Is always smiling at any moment. He could hit a two-run go-ahead home run in the eighth inning. Hopefully, that player is back, and hopefully that player is what we see this year. Um, Because I think we've all said that we believe Tatis is going to have massive, massive years upcoming in his career. And starting with this year would be great. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's going to have to win an MVP. Because he's, I mean, he's just capable of winning multiple. <laughs> so yeah. with this type of contract and at his age and what he's capable of doing and where he's finished MVP voting, I mean, who knows? Maybe it's 2024. Uh, 619 Cam, thank you for uh, your membership in the Super Chat. He says Padres needed a good team win like this. El Nino and Suarez. Suarez has been so incredible. He's thrown 100 Dominant. tonight. Dominant. Um, let's hope we can carry this on for the remainder of this series and week. Fingers crossed. You know, I heard something really defeatist today. And by the way, after this, I want to tell our viewers about our title sponsor, Mark Nimitz. We're going to get to all your supers. You got to subscribe, folks, and you got to smash the like button for you. We're just getting started. So settle in, grab some popcorn, grab a drink. I'm actually going to get a, yeah. um, what am I going to drink? Not uh-huh. a kombucha. Seltzer water. 
How crazy is that? Wow. Way to you know, celebrate get, a big win of seltzer water. We just we passed 5,800 subscribers, guys. We just passed 5,800 subscribers. Let's, can we get to 6,000 like soon? We are 195 away from 6,000 subscribers. And I know uh, what I was going to say. And hit the like okay, button. Keep, what yeah, are you say? Subscribe. So yeah. I heard something really defeatist today, and I'm not going to tell you where I heard it. Let me guess. Actually, I don't want to guess. <laughs> no, don't guess because I honestly, I'm not, that's not the goal of this. That's not the point. But I heard something that really surprised me. The, the basic premise, and some of you heard this, the premise was, I'd be thrilled if they won one game at Dodger Stadium. I'm like, wait, hold on. Like, wow. Guys, it's, it's baseball regular season. You'd be thrilled if they got one game. I mean, the odds are they'd get one game. It's a three-game series. The odds would suggest you probably get one of three. The Dodgers typically lose one of every three games. I'm like, I mean, is that really where we are? Like where you're like, you know what? We're just going to get steamrolled every single time we play elite teams like LA and Atlanta. And, you know, hopefully we can win like 80 games. It's just like you're you're 13 games into the year. I may. Um, it's a parm night. 13 games into the year. So what? So they lose because Kim drops a ball. Now they can't beat the Dodgers. It's impossible to beat the Dodgers. I watched them play the Dodgers pretty well in Korea. Now they can't beat them at Dodger Stadium. It's been a week. Like, I feel like everyone I feel relaxed. Like, I feel like you're sounding like me, John. Because how's that? I feel like every time the Dodgers would beat the Padres over the last couple of years, I was met with not by just not by you, but like, well, you know, it's it's fine. Who cares? It's the Dodgers, of course, they're gonna. Well, that's them. what I would say if they lose. The, if they get swept in the series, that's what I'd say. But I wouldn't go. I've never went into a Dodger Padres series ever saying they have no chance to win it. No, uh, yeah, I mean, that's I've what always, I'm saying. I've always been of the mindset like, you know, going into those series. You got to go in to try to win those series. And if you come out of those series and you lose them, I'm not going to sit here and be happy about it just because it's the Dodgers. And of course, they're going to win 115 well, games. And like, yeah, but when did we ever say going into the series or when would it be like, I mean, maybe if they were trash and it's 2021, the wheels have fallen off and they're eight and 40 in their last 48, we'd be like, you got no shot because that would just because they have no shot because they're right. eight and 40 okay. in the last 48 yeah, games. Who cares at that point? Why would you go into a series like April 10th and be like, we have no shot? Like what 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 have you seen from this team that would suggest they have no shot based on just seeing them against the Dodgers a week ago where they split and you could argue they they actually outplayed them in both games and could have won both of the games if not for Cronenworth Glovegate. Anyway, we can get back to it. Let me get this from Cam. Oh, we already did. We already got to this. Hold on. Let me get to Mark Nimitz. Um, guys, please support our title sponsor here on the wrap-up show. If you have an insurance need, now Mark is on a cruise right now because he's been texting us all night what happened. He's asking us about the national championship game. He's asking us about Tatis. He's, I mean, he has he has no cell service, or he only has text. He doesn't have social media. He's like, what is happening? Anyway, anyway he knows that the Padres have won. Um, if you support our channel, you got to support Mark Nimitz. He could save you seven hundred and fifty dollars or more on your insurance just by switching. Whether it's, I mean, I have a um, homeowner's life insurance and an earthquake insurance policy through Mark. Okay, he has saved my family thousands of dollars because we had to file a claim in twenty twenty two. And he saved us so much time. He's a great insurance agent. You can take that from us. And he's a lifelong Padres fan. He's a native San Diegan. You can click the link in the description down below to get to his website. You can get free quotes online or by calling Mark. Okay, he's going to save you money on your insurance. Next time you have a renewal, before you renew, call Mark. Whatever it is, he's going to save you money. He's a great insurance agent with great service and communication. You can take that from us. Auto, home, business, life, renters, whatever it is. If you support our work, he's been with us since day one. He's a great insurance agent. He loves this channel. He loves the Padres. So, again, please support our title sponsor, Mark Nimitz at Farmers Insurance, by clicking the link in the description down below. Yeah, all his information is in the description, or not description, but the ticker there, his yeah. phone number and his email address, mnimitz at farmersagent.com. When you reach out to our buddy uh, Mark, let him know that John and Jim from the wrap-up show sent you and also tell me you missed a great game tonight. Sorry. Oh, yeah. Nice time to go on a cruise when they overcome a 30-run comeback against the Cubs. Yeah, no, it's fine. Just missed the best, you know, comeback win in, like, franchise history. It's all good. We're right back. I'm going to see what I have to drink, potentially. Are you getting the seltzer? I don't know. Yeah. I, uh, <sighs> we'll just wait for John to get his seltzer water. I guess. All right. Okay. Big win gets a seltzer. Hold on. Okay. 
Everybody, hold on. John's getting a, a seltzer water. I, all 500 plus people of you are right, sitting here waiting on. for here John to get a options. seltzer. I've got, well, this turns out this just to be sparkling cider. Martinelli's. I have pe peppermint schnapps, but that, I don't even know what that means. Like, what, what do you do with peppermint schnapps? Drink it. Dude, why the <laughs> peppermint schnapps? I have Dude, Martinelli's. I will, I will give you, John, I swear to God, I will give you $50 right now. I will Venmo you $50 if you mm -hmm. take a, oh, you have nothing left. There's nothing in there. Nothing in there. But that's a good amount. That's probably a shot, shot and a half right there, right? Two? I'll give you 20 bucks if you if you take that right now. All of it. I think I hate peppermint. Come on. Do it. Do it. Do it. Chug it. Even what does the chat mountain. think? What's the chat think? Take a shot. Take a shot. Take oh. a shot. Take a shot. Peppermint schnapps. Peppermint schnapps. Take a shot. Be a man. Take a shot. Take a shot. Take a shot. Uh, uh, oh. Oh. I like peppermint. Oh. Oh. Yeah. But it's worth it. Good win. It wasn't a lot. It was like a little sip anyway. It's fine. It's a sip. You don't have to vent on me. Yeah, I know. I wouldn't have been you I'll anyway. This is some La LaCroix or whatever the hell this is. <laughs> LaCroix. All right. Let's get let's get serious. I wish yeah, I think, we're, like, like we haven't been serious all night. Um, all right. Let's get back to some of these supers. All right. What is this about? Wait, hold on. This before the beef. This one from uh, James. James, thanks for hanging out, man. Um, today, the team played for Peter. Hashtag for the faithful. I like that. It is cool seeing the heart patch. On the uniforms it really is it's pretty special for this it season. is this this um, tonight tonight peter would have I and mean, this is a win that it, peter would have absolutely loved absolutely i agree with that um the beef uh says 10 percent played no they played 13 games so 16 would be 10 percent. but okay four home runs and he's hitting like shite like shit. who are we talking about are we like talking about Toddy? Toddy? Four home runs, and he's hitting like shit. Toddy's got a 900 OPS, so he's not hitting like shit. Um, and he's and they haven't played 10%, so they've played 13 games. If we do the math on it, he's on pace for like 50 home runs. He's 40 good? would be at 16 games. I mean, he's on pace for like 45 home runs. So, I mean, or we can't be critical of Fernando Tatis Jr. this year, can we? Who's who's being How? critical of Fernando? Why what? would it? Be critical that's what I'm saying. Is he is he playing like shit? I don't think he's playing like shit. I mean, if you want to say like he like he had, he had like one bad error in right field, and like other than that, I think he's been really good. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe he's not talking about him. Probably. Um, Murray, thank you. He says at my age, I have ample on speed dial with this team. Oh, ambulance because of like the heart racing. Yeah, yeah. By the way, I don't. I'm not a peppermint schnapps guy. <laughs> Chug a LaCroix then. Shotgun a LaCroix. Yeah. Screw that. Sip a LaCroix. Be a man. I'm such an idiot. Um, yeah. Dactyle, thank you. Dactyle says this game felt like an exorcism. We needed this win bad. Great team win. But that AB from Jake turned it all around and got the rally started. Go pods. I mean, let's talk about Jake Cronenworth for a moment. Maybe we should have like a Jake Cronenworth tribute special. A crony He's, special? I mean... He is hitting the ball really hard. Like, this is not the player he was a year ago at any point. I don't remember him having any 13-game stretch like the 13 games he's had this year, which is really encouraging because if he can somehow do this mm -hmm. this year or anything like it, I, I be honest, I don't know if I counted on that heading into the year. It was a big risk to start the season to have yeah. him in the three-hole. It just was coming off of the year he had last year. You're thinking to yourself, Jake Cronenworth's our three hitter. Like what? And so far, he's proven them right. He has done everything that you want to see. Um, not a three hole hitter do, but everything you wanted to see from him this season. He's hitting the ball hard. He's driving in runs. Mm -hmm. He doesn't look like a guy that's completely defeated at the plate. He's you know in big time moments coming up in those big time moments and coming through so far, so good with Jake Cronenworth and he's played really good defense at first, take away the ball, literally blowing up his glove in South Korea. 
Mm-hmm. Other than that, he's been great at first. And that is just such a huge boost for this team if Jake Cronenworth can have a bounce back year and give you, I don't know, 20 home runs with a close to 800 OPS. I mean, if you get that type of year from Jake Cronenworth, oh my, I just, I mean, imagine you get a 21 home run, 815 OPS year from Jake Cronenworth while he plays really good defense at first base. Was that, that was his first homer, right? Does of it? the year? I think it was. Am I wrong? Into the crone zone. Crone zone. I think it was the first crone zone, other than his glove. It was um, his first home run of the year. But you gotta love me. You gotta love some crone zone. Hey, one home run every thirteen games. That's how many, no. John? Twenty. Yeah. 20. Nineteen. Yeah. Yeah. He could hit. Tw- he could hit twenty home runs. He, no, he's absolutely capable of hitting twenty home runs, and he's capable of having an eight hundred OPS. Yes, we've seen it before. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Ryan, thank you. He says third base sucks. <laughs> oh, what weighty? <laughs> Wady. I mean, listen, of course they're a liability at third because without Manny Machado, I mean, you, you locked up a third baseman for, you know, a decade plus. You're thinking it's Manny Machado, and right now it's not. We don't know when he's coming back. It's it's definitely concerning. He says, need Manny back in a real DH. I mean, again, if you're looking for areas of improvement, you'd love Manny in the field. It seems a little bit of a reach to be playing guys like Tyler Wade every single day. Wady? Um, and I... I I have no problem with Manny DHing, but you want him at third. And I have no problem with Campy DHing, but you can't DH Campy if he's not catching. If you only have two catchers, you get the points. So, I mean, again, a little bit of a work in progress, I would say. It only becomes a big problem if, if by the middle of April, they decide that Manny's probably not going to be ready to play the field this year. I think he'll play the field this year. I really do. I don't know if it's going to be in April. I'd be shocked, Jim, if he doesn't play the field this year. What's more important, Manny Machado playing third base or him as your DH? Because when you put him at third base, now you have to put like Tyler Wade or someone on your bench that's not even close to Manny Machado as your DH. Say that again. (laughs) So are you saying would you rather have him field or would you rather have him hit? Does it make you... I'm just I'm just thinking to myself like if Manny goes back to the field and he becomes in plays third base again, right? Who are you DHing then? Is my question. Right. Is it Campisano when he's not catching? But then again, then you're putting Higgy in there. You know exactly. what I mean? Because now Higgy's in your lineup, which again, we don't know if that's a problem. Sorry, or not, Campy, but... my bad. Are you putting Wadey in there? Are you putting Eggy in there? No, no, no. These aren't DHs. That's the problem. And that's to the point right. of the of the super from Ryan. It's a good point. It's a point. Yeah. yeah. It's a value. Again, they're they're not a perfect roster. And no. most teams probably aren't. And, and that includes the Padres, is what I would say at this and point. If, if you if you play well and you you um give you know this 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 front office an opportunity to go out and buy at the deadline. Then I'm sure that DH will be something that they'll look at. But you got to get there first, and you got to be a winning team, and you have to give the front office reason to go out and try to improve it. I'm never having peppermint schnapps again. I don't. Are like you it. like drunk a little bit? You feel no, like I, I just hate the like the the don't taste of it. Anything. Um, HBVV PPPPJJJ. Thank you. I said Suarez over hater. I take back what I said, Tatis's fashion. What you said about Hater over Suarez, maybe. I mean, Suarez has been great. Uh, I mean, I think Hater was pretty damn good as a closer. Didn't have that flexibility. But, um, man, if Suarez can somehow put together a season like the way he started this season, that sounds great to me. Suarez. what I said this in the offseason. If Suarez is that 2022 version, that's going to help the bullpen out a lot. Yes. And so far, what you've seen from him, he looks almost like a better. I mean, he's throwing hard, and he's out there pretty much when he's when his location is on. He's like unhittable. Yep. And uh, you could be looking. And it's very early, with you know, mm-hmm. but you could be looking at a another season from a Padres closer that is is dominant. If he continues this. Yeah, it's interesting, like you said. And the truth truth is, I know we don't say it's early, but it is early in terms of coming up with like general statements about individual players and the type of year that they're going to have. Right. 
you know, at some point we'll get into that. Guys have had, you know, 75 plate appearances, which I think becomes a lot more real. And at some point, you know, relievers will have had, you know, eight, 10 appearances and starters will have made four or five starts. We're getting closer to it being kind of real. That doesn't mean there aren't ups and downs or ebbs and flows to a season, but like we we're not at the third game, you know, and, you know, a couple of games from now, they'll be at the 10% mark of the season. So we're, we're getting closer to where you can start reading into what's happening with these individual players. Um, Taco Bell called 911. Thank you. Uh, great name, by the way, as we always say. Um, does this win show the difference a manager makes you think? I feel like Schilt has this team never giving up, or is this just the players? I don't. I think that's reading a little bit too much into it personally. I could be wrong. We'll see how it plays out over the course of a season. Remember, Bob Melvin won 89 games in 2022. So mm -hmm. Uh, I, it's hard for me to be overly critical of Melvin and overly complimentary of Shield off 13 games this year. Yeah, this this to me me like means nothing as far as manager manager goes. Like this is all to me on the players. Yeah, because really. Tinkler had a, a game into like we said the eight nothing Camarena game. Yeah, I, this the and you'll you'll see it, and I know you'll you, people will tweet about it, and mm -hmm. I'm not attacking you Taco Bell call nine one one, but. <laughs> um, you're going to see the this team would have never done this under Bob Melvin right okay well then you forgot about 2022 because <laughs> they did so in 2022 guys was you remember the start they got off to in 2022 it was historically good for the franchise weren't they, they were something like 38 and 21 yeah they were fantastic I mean, that's like 660 type baseball now, they didn't play like that all year yeah. But they did play well in the postseason for a couple and of series. Two of their biggest wins in the postseason were comeback wins versus the Dodgers and the Phillies. Correct. And so, the, the Mets series is no walk in the park either. I mean, that was very impressive in the moment. Mm -hmm. I just you think know? that, again, it's the whole – the reason why this team didn't win last year was because of Bob Melvin, and the reason why this team is different this year is because of Mike Schultz. Like, no, it's not. Not it's yet. Because of the, it, not yet, but it's it yeah. starts with the players and – that this team will be different this year because of the players. Yeah, you like to think they're going to learn from what happened last year, you know, just collectively, you know, they don't want to go through the same thing again. Uh, Jesse, what's going on in Hawaii? Thank you for your support, man. Appreciate the generous Thanks, Jesse. Super. He says, uh, this may have been said, but I just joined. Cronenworth has had great plate appearances. Like, great. We agree. We were talking about him probably five minutes before he came in the chat. Um, he has been arguably – as good of a player as they've had this year? I mean, where would you go with the ranking of position players on offense? I'm talking about like their what they've done at you know at the plate this year. I mean, Campy and Crony and Toddy would be your top three contributors, I guess. I would say Toddy, Crony, <laughs> yeah, Campy, and Action Jackson have been yeah, true, true. Has Definitely. been the four bright spots in this lineup this year. Profar mm -hmm. has been decent. Profar actually has been really good. I take that back. Profar has been really good. He's been good. Yep. I I I, I mean, yeah, I take that back. I'll put Profar in that mix too. I mean, if you're if you're gonna tell me over a 40 at bat stretch, you're gonna get a, a 308 average and a 913 OPS from Jerks and Profar. Mm -hmm. Sign me the F up. And then you get what we've seen from Campy to this to this point. Merrill, the last couple of games has not looked like a 20 year old. I tell you that um, you get the big moments from Toddy and you get the consistency so far this year from Crony. Uh, thank you again, Jesse. He corrected his super with a super. He didn't need to do that, but thank you. Um, and then Rich, what's going on, man? We were texting back and forth all night. Rich, thanks for hanging out. He says, John, that schnapps taste will linger for days. Don't say that. That honestly will scare me. I hope that's not the case. <laughs> Great. You Now he's going to go look up how I'm long these like, schnapps, schnapps taste who, who, stays in your mouth. Yeah, do I do I call 911 for having like peppermint schnapps? Um, let's get to our friends in Aura, guys. If you're looking to get healthier, which I am after taking that shot of schnapps, um, you got to check out our friends over at Aura. They are a local company based right here in San Diego, offices in Liberty Station. Their co-founder, Will, huge Padres fan, longtime supporter of our work and this channel. They have plant-based nutritional products. All of them are plant-based nutritional. I got the probiotic I take in the morning, which I'm going to need now. Tomorrow morning for digestion, heart health, mental clarity, and more. They have pre-workout supplements. They have proteins for after workouts. They have omega-3 oils. If you're taking a fish oil, you should take the omega-3 oil 
from our friends at Aura. They have sleep pills, immunity pills, and more. Check out all of their products, all plant-based, best of the market, ORA.organic, or click the link in the description down below. Yep. If you want to live a healthy lifestyle and you want some supplements to take to help you achieve that goal, Aura is the place to go. www.ora.organic. They have everything you need for that healthy lifestyle that you crave. They have the uh, probiotics for, for gut health. They have the fish oils. They have the sleep pills if you have trouble sleeping. They also have the pre-workouts for all you guys that like to work out out there. And then, of course, the protein powder for a quick protein shake whenever you want it. You know, start of your day, after the gym, they have it all. www.ora.organic. Pick up some stuff and you'll thank us later. Is it just me? And I wasn't there. And I was at the two screens set up at the national championship game. Is it just me or were they getting booed? I think they were getting booed. And this was, again, this was probably their smallest crowd of the year. You have your Monday. Um, a lot of Cubs fans there. I'll tell you that. A lot of tons Cubs fans. of Cubs fans. There always are. I've been there. There's always a lot of Cubs is. Fans. Yeah. There's always a million. Um, but I think they announced under 35K, which is still a big crowd. Big crowd for an April Monday night. But A's again, would give their like leg to have a 35,000 night no uh, doubt. on a Monday. <laughs> but you're getting booed. People are tweeting about AJ Preller's job security. What's wrong with this team? <laughs> you know, when's fam coming? Oh, are they sellers? You know, can they acquire Luis Arise April 8th? That's never going to happen, folks. <laughs> um, and then all of a sudden to kind of change everything in, a, in an inning is kind of what happened. Now we'll see what they make of it, Jim. That's the thing that fascinates me. What happens tomorrow? We don't know. You, you'd like to think you got a decent shot. You have Joe Musgrove on the mound. You're coming off what happened here tonight. You have Dylan Cease awaiting on Wednesday. Um, then you have that weekend series at Dodger Stadium. But what do you make of this? And again, that's why baseball is so hard with turning points because pitchers change every single day. So it's not as simple as the same team goes out there every single day. I'm fascinated by what happens as a result of what happened here tonight. They, for me, that you have to now win this series. You cannot lose the next two games of the series after tonight and feel like this means anything. So you, you got to get one of the next two. And man, you'd love to get greedy right now off tonight and somehow win two of the next two. Especially when you have... Um... Musgrove and Cease pitching tomorrow night and the next day. Mm -hmm. I'm with you. They have to win this series for in order for this night to like mean anything, really. I mean, if you go out tomorrow yeah. and you lose seven one seven two, it's like, okay, that's great. But I mean, what if they end up sweeping the Cubs here? Now you are on a three game winning streak coming off of the best comeback win and felt like over at least a year mm -hmm. for this team. And you parlayed that into a sweep of a team who has been playing really good baseball to start the season. I mean, it took what two or three from the Dodgers and yeah. Wrigley. They started 0 and two. They'd won six of seven coming in. And you go into Dodger stadium with little momentum here and you don't feel like the, the sky is falling and yeah, you know, exactly. Padres fan don't feel like, Oh, well, you know, screw it. Here we go again. Type of feeling, you know, you give yourself a little boost and throughout a season, you're going to need these types of boosts because it's so freaking long and you can't, you, you need, you need these adrenaline kicks at times. Cause once the adrenaline wears off of opening day, like I said, with Jackson Merrill and like, how does he perform now? Once the adrenaline is gone? Well, he's performed great. Good for him. Mm -hmm. That's a, mm -hmm. that's, it's just such a, good thing to see a young player actually producing and performing and looks like he's developing the right way. But throughout a long season, you're going to need jolts of energy. And I know it's like technically early in the season, right? Yeah. 13 games in, but this was a it jolt is. of energy for this team. Yeah. I mean, to the point where the UT has a breaking news headline that says Fernando Tatis Jr. <laughs> it is blast home run and epic comeback like it's breaking news at the breaking UH, you, know? News. you know again they they hadn't had a lot of these um in recent history to your point and they got it tonight we'll see what they make of it come tomorrow again with joe musgrove on the mound for, oh i already had that up didn't i okay. for san diego what we do need to uh, let our viewers know about by the way jim because we've, we've been playing a lot if we're going to be honest uh underdog fantasy all right if you are not playing along with us each and every day, you should be. If you use promo code PODSWRAP, that's P-A-D-S-W-R-A-P, you're getting a 100% deposit match up to $100. You can play Padres Pick'ems every single time they play, okay? 
You go two for two in your pickums, you can win three times or more your money in a single night. You go up to three or four or five times, you can win 100 times your money in a single night. You can do it across all sports. You can combine college basketball with baseball, NBA with baseball, and so on. And so forth, Jim, it's so fun. It's so simple. It's so easy. Um, it's been a ton of fun with baseball season underway to be playing underdog fantasy basically each and every day. Now, the mega play of last night's uh, wrap-up show was a Fernando Tatis Jr. home run. Got it. Right. But then, unfortunately, it was a Fern- It was also a Manny Machado, I think, over one and a half bases, and then a Cody Bellinger double over half a yep. double. Wait, this and, was last uh, night? Remember last night? And I said it was like a $10 bet got you $700. Well, well we got the Tatis total bases. Well, no. We, yeah, but John, you have to get it, minimum two of three. <laughs> but didn't we get two of three? Isn't that what you're telling me? No, because I had Cody Bellinger over a half a double, and he did not get a double. Ah, you were close. And Tatis <laughs> and, and then and Machado did not get over one and a half total bases uh, other than that though you got it <laughs> yeah, just one of three is fine you still would have lost money but um, but it goes to show you can go you had a three for three last night that paid 70 to one and it wasn't out of the realm of possibility it either. wasn't that's the thing you weren't you didn't need multiple home run games from guys no no and the padres are not up right now it, it takes after the game ends for certain teams it takes a little bit for underdog to refresh the games and, and get those up there yeah, this game just ended within the hour or whatever right so we can't do it, but um, it is very it, underdog fantasy gives you the opportunity to only have to bet small portions of money, 10, 15, 20 bucks, and gives you the opportunity to win big time money, like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars. Well, look at this, dude. An Acuna Homer coupled or parlayed with a Nimmo double tomorrow. Okay. Seriously, an Acuna Homer. And a Brandon Nimmo double, 20 pays 495. <laughs> I mean, okay. <laughs> you know, I mean, 10 pays 250 basically. So, like, you need two results to come in. That's not that hard to envision happening. That's the amazing thing about it. And here's you the best two part. for two. You got the best player in baseball. And yeah, the Mets offense is struggle, but okay, a double from a player that's not exactly earth shattering. And you pay twenty five to one like that. That's how simple it is. And all of a sudden, you you bring a third player or third prop into the equation, and all of a sudden, you're winning fifty to seventy to one. You you've had a hundred to one propositions up um, yeah. at Underdog Fantasy. So use promo code PodsWrap P A D S W R A P. Get a one hundred percent deposit match up to one hundred dollars and play Padres Pickums. They'll have those. Uh, they'll have the Padres Cubs game up come morning time, and there's a, a million different plays you can get in, and you can win up to a hundred times your money in a single night. So yeah. Podrap, P-A-D-S-W-R-A-P, promo code Podrap, get 100% deposit match. Your first 100 deposit matched, guess what? That's a free $100 to spend to win real money. So you have to, exactly. so you get $100 in fake money to bet that you could get real money for. Yeah, and you if turn you, that 20, like we just said, Acuna Nimmo into 500 bucks. Yeah, I mean, it's it's that simple, guys. That simple sign up, promo code Podrap. All right, the wrap-up shows uh, branching out here for a moment. Thank you, J.D. Gaucho. He says, uh, UConn kept Purdue at arm's length. They let Edie get his, and nobody else scored. They've rolled the NCAA tournament the last two years. No doubt. I mean, that game was kind of what boring. we expected. It was super boring. It just, you knew from the jump. It just wasn't happening. You're like, this ain't it. Th- their strategy was, Edie, you can get yours. We're shutting everybody yeah. down. How no many threes could- did they hit? One, Purdue? Uh, how many threes did Purdue shoot? Six, five. I mean, it was seven. an embarrassment. They shot seven three pointers the entire game. And they made one for a team they that made like one three shoots in the threes all the time. Edie was fifteen for twenty five from the field. <laughs> That's amazing. Thirty seven and ten, and they got blown out. <laughs> crazy and completely crazy. Anybody that talks shit about the Aztecs losing this year to UConn. Um, yeah, you you're not look historically good. You're not that, that conversation, and that is not looking so good right now because this UConn team is at a different level the last two years. Completely. And the Aztecs last year in the national title game were the only team to they actually had get down them to fight. five. Yeah, they had it at five. I just looked at the play by play the other day or like the game summary, and it, they hit two free throws, pulled to within five. Then uh, Hawkins hit a three to make an eight point game. Then San Diego State missed the front end of a one and one down seven or eight. 
Um, and that's as close as they would get. But I mean, UConn's just, I don't know. I don't know what you can say about them. I've watched a lot of college basketball, and there's not a lot of teams like the UConn team we've seen the last couple of years. Um, okay, what was I going to say here? Oh, I know what I was going to say, Jim. If you're here what? live or on replay, you got to subscribe. We've had so many people subscribe tonight. We're trying to get to 6,000 this month. This would be a great jumping off point. This crazy epic come from behind win. I mean, this thing, this thing hopefully has legs. This thing's got to have legs. I mean, if if not this, then what? <laughs> you know, <laughs> like if this ain't going to be some type of thing where they can use the springboard to maybe like hopefully a winning streak of some sorts, I don't know what the hell is. Mm -hmm. Because this is a perfect game to say it's going a five game winning streak. Screw it. Let's win these next two against the Cubs and let's take two or three, the first two games from the Dodgers in LA. Boom, five game winning streak. How you doing? Won the last two series. Right. If that, if not, if not now, like what, what else? What's it going to take? So yeah, I, I totally agree. Uh, Jeremy, thank you for the super. He says, want a look at groom for what? <laughs> why <laughs> i mean where in, in in your bullpen i mean in the bullpen he's not gonna start here um right now i don't know he's done so far in the minor leagues it's only been what a couple of days since the minor league season has started so i i don't i think at some point you'll get more of a look at jay groom presumably if they believe in anything about him i don't know if they do or not truthfully um I don't know. Again, their bullpen hasn't been great. That, so that's fair. Are we talking about Jay Groom right now? What's what's going on here? I assume. <laughs> what, what's I assume. happening? Why are we talking about Jay? I mean, no offense, Jeremy, but like, why are we talking about Jay Groom? <laughs> I mean, I don't even know what role would he play. He's not going to start. You're going to put him in your bullpen. Is he is he an upgrade? My like Johnny Burrito I mean, with like good stuff, even if he's been hit, <laughs> or Jay I mean, Groom? I'm. I, I, why are we talking about Jay Groom? I don't know. What people are saying still not sold on. Um, Avila Avila no, was a huge reason why they stayed in this game or yeah. at least won this game I know he gave up those runs he gave up some runs yeah. four, those four runs there but like he also ate up a lot of innings he did so when this game became an 8-7 game Schilte not many people complaining about his bullpen uses tonight Schilte right. was yeah, able to use the, 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 the big time arms or the A team and you know because what if if Avila doesn't do this, and what if they have to put De Los Santos in like the fourth inning or the fifth inning? Look, okay. he says extended starter and in eating innings. I mean, <laughs> I love you, Jeremy, dude. Is that what we're, is that what you're looking for right now? After tonight, I mean, eating in it, they don't. They might need someone like that over the course of the year, and I'm not convinced Matt Walter makes 30 starts. Make no mistake. And again, Groom will probably get a chance at some point, but. When Jay Groom gets promoted, I'm not gonna be like, "All right, here we go." <laughs> they're they're it's serious. Time. It's time. It's <laughs> time. Like, yeah, I don't know. Um, and again, all these people, no more burrito and high leverage. Next guy, guys, how many guys are in the bullpen? Who do you trust? And who? I mean, the guys are gonna pitch. If Johnny Burrito is gonna pitch, and he's gonna, he actually has to pitch important innings. I would think for this team. They they gave up a lot, like Juan Soto, to acquire him. He's going to have a meaningful role, presumably, yeah. on this team. And he has good stuff. Now he's been hit, but I think he has good stuff. I think he has good stuff, too. It's just a matter yeah. of, like, his control. No, I agree. Um, okay, guys. So, a reminder. Subscribe. Year-round content for Padres fans. Really appreciate you, everyone here live or on replay. So please subscribe. Uh, smash the like button. How many likes do we have tonight, Jim? We currently have, John, uh, 365 likes. That's a lot. Yeah, I would like, you know, at least 150 more. I want a 500 like episode. You want a 500 like video? This, this, I think this, uh, this video deserves it. This, this tonight deserves it. Tonight deserves all the likes we possibly can get. We've had well over 500 people in this chat. We're going to get a bunch of people watching this on replay. I know a bunch of people that watch this on replay the next mornings. Um, and if you are one of those people, hey, that, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. We're close to 6,000. We want to get to 6,000 by the end of this month. And, uh, yeah, it, it takes you guys out there to do that, and we appreciate yeah. you all for doing it. Yeah, we should have 6,000 subs. There's tens of thousands of Padres fans. 
There's tens of thousands. We see how many people watch these videos. So if you wouldn't mind subscribing, please subscribe. Um, follow us on X at John Schaefer at Jim Russell SD. Thank you for the super thanks. If you're here on replay, thank you for those that become members. You get emojis and badges. Click join down below. Support our partners, Mark Nimitz at Farmers Insurance. If you have an insurance need, Mark is our title sponsor, has been with us since day one. Make sure to click the link in the description down below. If you want to get healthier, check out Aura, ORA.organic, plant based nutritional products. Click the link in the description down below. And again, Underdog Fantasy, play along with us uh, beginning tomorrow, Padres and Cubs. You can play Padres Pickums. Use promo code PADSRAP. That's P-A-D-S-W-R-A-P. Get a 100% deposit match up to $100. Join us tomorrow on San Diego Sports 760 from 3 to 6 for John and Jim. And then tomorrow night for another edition of the wrap-up show. Wow. I, I didn't see that coming. That would be the equivalent of basically Purdue coming back from like 15 down with 6 to play. Like if they were 15 down with six minutes left and they somehow won that game, like, whoa, I didn't see that. <laughs> that was a little bit bigger game. That was like, you know, uh, yeah, good point. But I mean, it, but in terms of like, you just don't, you're sitting there knowing what's going to happen. Like, you know, what's going to happen. And I thought I knew it was going to happen tonight. I thought, yeah, Cubs are in control. Padres have no shot. Well, you just know kidding. what? They had a shot, John. No Apparently. one believed it. No one believed it but them and Mark Bartlett and Rich McGuire and Schilty. And Schulte. No one believed it but those people. That's it. And Toddy. Well, Toddy's a part of the Padres, John. Oh, you're right. I want a Johnny and Jimmy shirt. Someone make it and sell it to us. All right. For Jim, I'm John. We'll see you tomorrow night on the wrap-up show. Thanks, guys. Subscribe. Sell